Hey guys, my name is Mitsumio, and today I want to talk about the two new upcoming night maps for Battlefield 4, Siege of Shanghai and Goldmud Railways. Uh, a while back, a DICE developer tweeted out that these two maps are 99% done on the CTE, but won't run on the old gen consoles because of all the dynamic lighting. Some people took this quote for meaning, holy crap, the old gen consoles are holding back development. Does this now mean that we're never going to get these maps at all because it won't run on the old gen systems? This is awful. I'm upset, Dice. What the hell is going on? And while I can see why they're upset, because I wouldn't want this to happen as well, uh, I don't think this is actually going to be the case, and more likely than not, yeah, they won't appear on the old gen systems, but that does not mean that they won't be coming to PC or Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Uh, if you're not aware, DICE has already confirmed that the old gen consoles only have room for two new maps in any updates. Uh, I think this is a thing with Microsoft and Sony, is that they don't allow games on those platforms to get too large and Battlefield has hit that limit so they only allow two more and so if you play on the Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3 the two new maps that you're gonna be getting is the new community one which is looking amazing I think everyone's going to like it and of course the new Zavod night shift map which is coming in the new summer patch which should launch sometime in September uh, the reason why this is important is that the new Dragon Valley map the classic map that's being reintroduced into Battle 4 isn't even being developed for for these old gen systems. DICE doesn't even have to take it into consideration. They're going into it with the mindset that they're just going to create the biggest and largest map that's going to run on the new gen and for PC, and they don't even have to take those old gen consoles in mind whatsoever. The reason why this is even more important is that this solidifies uh, the stance on EA and DICE that they're not going to make all of the consoles equal at this point. The old gen systems aren't even getting this content at all. They're not getting Dragon Valley. And so what this means in the grand scheme of things is that these two n night maps, yes, they may not be coming to the old gen consoles because of that dynamic lighting, but that doesn't mean that they're not coming for PC and for Xbox One and PlayStation 4. If, if Dragon Valley is any indication that they're okay with not having equality between the, the different platforms, then I would be very surprised if this wasn't the case, especially since they're 99% done. And while this isn't definitive proof that we will be getting these two new maps, Maps. I scoured the internet for a while trying to find a tweet or a source that could verify that yes, absolutely, we will get we will be getting these two new maps in an update. I think from all of the evidence that we just kind of talked about. Uh, it is sort of safe to say that eventually we will be getting these in an update. It's sad to say that they won't be coming to the old gen consoles, but at this point, they're very old. They just do not have the hardware capabilities to even do stuff like this. And so while it does suck, I think it would suck even more if the new gen consoles and PC weren't able to experience these amazing maps. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is that the Phantom Bow looks to be getting possibly two new arrow types. Uh, I was running around on the CTE and some of my viewers mentioned uh, that the Phantom Bow now has fire arrows and poison arrows. The first time I heard about this, I got really excited. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but I love the Phantom Bow. I hate the defensive field upgrade kicks it right in the teeth. Like, I love this thing, but I hate the defensive field upgrade, but the proposition of having two new arrow types to play with sounds amazing. Like, I thought this could be a really cool way of having different play styles when you were using the Phantom Bow. Sadly, they're absolutely terrible. Uh, the fire arrow, for example, is cool. You, f you fling it out, and it's basically incendiary grenade. If you hit anywhere near an enemy, they get lit on fire, or as long as they stand in it, they take damage. But it doesn't act as an incendiary, or at least to the best of my knowledge, where if you hit them and they run out of the fire, they don't can take continuous damage after that. Like, as long as they stay in it, they take about 10 damage every second. But as soon as they get out of the flames, they're good to go. The, <laughs> the poison arrow is even worse. I don't know if it's just not implemented correctly at this point, but I fired numerous shots at enemies, and every single time I died to said enemy, it only did 34 damage. It did never seemed to tick damage on the on someone, it just seemed to only do 34 damage and that was it. I, 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 don't, I don't know what they were going for here. And so maybe this was just something that they added to the CTE for people to play around with because it fits that jungle theme map a little bit. A poison arrow fits flawlessly in that jungle environment. But if they did this right, 
I think having just more arrow types could be a really unique way of having just a lot of fun with this with this primary weapon. Uh, for example, maybe if you hit someone with the poison arrow, it does a lot of damage over time. Like maybe if they don't reach a med bag after 10 seconds, then they die. That gives them 10 seconds to find you out and kill you, but if you're that sneaky little assassin and you're able to pick someone off at a distance, yeah, you don't instantly kill them, but if they're not able to, to get help from their teammates and they're not able to find a med bag, then after that 10 seconds, they're gonna fall down to the ground. That could be an interesting way of handling it. Uh, the fire one, I'm not exactly sure how they could balance that out. Maybe you could act as the incendiary grenade, where as long as you hit them, it will do continuous damage for five seconds, even if they jump out of the flames, but that might be a little bit too good. But the thing is, though, is that I don't understand DICE's mentality for making these arrows and the bow as terrible as it is. Like, I know that they wanted it to be a gimmick and they wanted it to be something that only skillful players would be successful with, but at this point, the poison arrow, for example, is so bad that even the best player in Battlefield would struggle to even get a single kill. I played with like 30 minutes with both these arrow types and I got like maybe two kills over those 30 minutes. It was just ridiculous how bad they were. And so I would hope that if DICE wanted to add these things in the game, which I hope that they would because they are very unique and they are cool, that they would at least make them halfway decent where even if you just got lucky, you could finally secure a kill with them. That's just my two cents though. Uh, but yeah guys, that is about it for today's little update. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts on these two topics. Do you agree with me that we'll probably be getting the two new night maps in an upcoming update and there's nothing to worry about? Do you like that these two new arrow types are added into the game but you'd like to see them upgraded? Or do you think that they're just, they should stay a gimmick, they should stay on the CTE and never make it to the normal Battlefield 4 release? Let me know down below. Uh, but yeah guys, until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.